Have you ever found yourself with an avoidant and wanting out of this gray area of a relationship or situationship, but instead find the avoidant to basically be unmoving in their preference towards a situationship instead? Perhaps as soon as you try to get out of the gray area or define the relationship in some way, you find that there's a resistance and even a massive pull backwards from the avoidant. Now, they may not say that they're against this, but their actions seem to demonstrate it. And more importantly, have you ever wondered why this is actually taking place and what you can do to break out of this strange cycle or pattern? Well, in today's video, we are going to cover the six reasons an avoidant seems to prefer a situationship and what you can actually do in terms of practical steps if you find yourself stuck in the gray area of this relationship dynamic and how to prevent yourself from getting stuck in the gray area of a relationship going forward so you are not at risk for being in an ambiguous place with anybody. Now, if you're new to this channel, my name is Thais and I put daily videos out here all about the subconscious mind, healing our relationships, attachment style, and really how we can move the needle in terms of creating really secure and thriving connections in our lives. So the first big reason is that dismissive avoidance are terrified of vulnerability. They associate at the subconscious level of mind vulnerability with neglect and rejection. As, as very young infants, because there was a lack of attunement when that attachment bond was being formed, often what essentially took place is DA struggled to actually feel like they could trust attachment and connection. And they were made to feel through that neglect that something was wrong with them, that they weren't getting their basic needs met in early childhood. And because of that, they learned as they grew and evolved to feel that, okay, well, when I'm vulnerable like this and I want to connect, I want to attach, it just gets rejected and it just feels effective. And so it brings me relief to not bother, to not even try. And so as a result, dismissive avoidance, they keep themselves safe and they avoid those painful feelings they associate with vulnerability by really pulling back and not investing in being open. And so a lot of that fear of vulnerability will obviously keep um, relationships from really progressing because part of what creates deeper attachment and, and connection is vulnerability. And without it, we can only really have the room and capacity to build these surface-based relationships. That depth of relationships, that depth of attachment actually comes from both parties in a relationship dynamic, opening up and sharing things with each other, and then learning to work through potential conflicts and, and challenges together, and also seeing and respecting and considering what one another shares with each other. So if somebody says to me, okay, I have, I have a fear of, of um, abandonment. And then I decide, okay, well, I'm going to go away for the weekend with some friends. I'm going to check in with them. I'm going to see how they're doing. I'm going to say, Hey, I'm still thinking of you. I care about you. Right. So I'm going to be in a situation or a dynamic where I'm considering what they've shared with me vulnerably. So anyways, that's number one, number two, um, as a result of, of part of number one, and as a result of the, the past, um, and their subconscious associations to what it means to connect deeply, Dismissive avoidance are essentially avoiding at a subconscious level, actually attaching, actually forming that attachment bond. And because what they've experienced from a true attachment bonding with their parents or caregivers in their upbringing is that it just leads to neglect. So they'll try to keep things at a surface level to um, stay safe, to avoid shame, to avoid vulnerability, like we talked about just a moment ago, and to avoid having to relive some of that trauma in a sense that was once experienced when they did deeply attach or when they were really reliant on somebody else. And they'll often also be avoiding feelings of being powerless or helpless if they deeply attach. And so if they feel like there's this pressure to avoid attaching, it's almost like somebody's pressuring you to do something you know is going to hurt you, right? And that's sometimes at a deep subconscious level or even unconscious level for dismissive avoidance, like really, really buried deep down. Um, sometimes that's essentially what they're experiencing and feeling is, okay, some part of me is interested in this person and cares about them, but attaching is a bad thing for me. So to have to move in that direction, why are you trapping or pressuring me to do something I know is gonna hurt me? And it's not that they objectively know the truth, it's that their subconscious mind is attached to the knowing of the past. And so they perceive, well, this was what it was in the past. 
And the subconscious projects the past into the future all the time. And so they keep assuming that this is going to be the outcome. Number three is situationships are so likely to occur when what, what somebody knows about love and what's modeled to them about love is breadcrumbing. So obviously in dismissive avoidance, they can tend to be people who breadcrumb others. And this is because they've been breadcrumbed. Their literal relationships with their caregivers um, in childhood were breadcrumbed relationships. So this is what feels safest. This is what feels most familiar going beyond that. And committing to something that's more than that is actually outside of the subconscious comfort zone. Now, consciously, we may look and say, hey, breadcrumbing isn't a very functional relationship, but subconsciously, and the subconscious is the one really running the show, responsible for roughly 95 to 97% of our thoughts, our feelings, our decisions, our actions. What essentially takes place is the breadcrumbing component that's there is what feels safe and familiar. And the subconscious mind goes, okay, well, this has been keeping us alive. We've been surviving. So this is working. So we shouldn't let go of this. And at the end of the day, the subconscious mind is largely just survival based. So it's looking to keep things familiar because it associates them with safety. So going and investing in something outside of that comfort zone feels very uncomfortable and very counterintuitive for a dismissive avoidant. Hence, why situationships seem like a much safer territory. The next one is dismissive avoidance don't usually know how to resolve conflict. So much of building deeper attachment bonds means learning how to work through things. There is no perfect partner. There is no, you know, you found your perfect match so you'll never have a problem or challenge in a relationship. Problems and challenges in relationships are opportunities for more closeness. They're opportunities for us to share our inner worlds with somebody else, let somebody know something they might not have known about us, and then come up with strategies and solutions to move through problems collectively. And when we are in a relationship dynamic where we've never really seen that, We've never had modeling for like how to share, hey, yesterday um, when situation X happened, that was actually a boundary for me. And I want you to know that for the future. And then the other person saying, oh, I didn't realize that. I'm sorry. I'll definitely look out for that in the future. Like when we don't have modeling for just being able to work through conflict. And by the way, conflict does not mean argument, right? Conflict means a discrepancy, a misunderstanding, a challenge in a relationship. An argument is when we raise our voices, we get heated, we get frustrated, we express that frustration, sometimes in unhealthy ways in arguments. Um, But the conflict can be an opportunity for a lot more um, growth together, understanding of each other. But when there's no modeling for that, dismissive avoidance generally tend to believe that when there's conflict, that's almost like the end of a relationship. Like, oh my gosh, there's an incompatibility. That must be this huge problem because they don't know the steps to take to communicate about needs and boundaries, to share their feelings and be vulnerable. So it becomes really difficult. And that idea or that that concept of like, hey, once we commit to somebody, we kind of have a duty to each other, um, scares a DA because sometimes they don't know how to operate in that space. Like, oh, what if I do make a mistake? How do we resolve it? I don't know. And it feels like a sense of learned helplessness. So they'll cope with that uncomfortable feeling by pushing away, by keeping things at arm's length. And that keeps them in in their safety and comfort zone. But ultimately, of course, um, stops a lot of progress and growth from happening in the relationship and even emotional area of life. The next thing, by the way, I forgot to say this, but by the way, um, if you want like a roadmap to dismissive avoidance and And if you are a DA or the partner of a DA, or even just like somebody that's dating a DA and you want to understand all the different pain points and how to approach these things, like for example, a DA struggles to resolve conflict, what do you do? We have a whole course. It's like the roadmap for dismissive avoidance. It's called um, how the dismissive avoidance shows up in the six stages of relationships or the advanced dismissive avoidance course. It's the same thing. And essentially um, what this course allows is for you to see all the things that might come up, all the pain points, challenges, and exactly what to do in those stages. So from the dating stage, all the way to the honeymoon, to the um, power struggle stage, the stability stage, like all the things that will come up and then what to do if you're on the receiving end. Um, Or if you are the DA, the things to know about yourself and to work on sort of course correcting to empower those sort of healthy, harmonious relationships. Um, And there's like reprogramming tools, communication tools, all kinds of stuff in there. So you can um, use the link below. And when you enter into your dashboard of the all access pass, just type in um, six stages and you'll see that course come up and it comes with like the whole roadmap, workbook, everything. 
Um, anyways, okay, so the next one is dismissive avoidance struggle to share their needs or boundaries, which even though they tend to be attracted to very giving people in relationships, if you don't know your needs and boundaries, and you're not sharing what your real truth is in a lot of small situations, then eventually you still feel like the relationship isn't meeting your needs and yet you're supposed to be meeting somebody else's and that entire dynamic feels disempowering. Um, so this can be a big reason to sort of keep everybody at arm's length and dismissive points are good with their survival boundaries, like their absolute boundaries. Like I just need to stay back, but they're not very equipped to say all the small boundaries. Like, Hey, I just want to stay in tonight and watch a movie because I'm feeling tired. You want to just come over and watch a movie and take it easy. And maybe we'll go out for dinner next week instead. Like they don't generally feel that empowered to share those small, more, um, you know, daily things that kind of happen in relationships and what their boundaries are around them. And so then they kind of just, anybody who, who's boundaryless ends up feeling trapped um, because then you get into situations where you feel like you can't communicate your way out and that's trapping. But sometimes that's actually on us as individuals to be able to show up and communicate for. Um, so last but not least, big reason DA stay in situationships is because they don't um, know how to be interdependent. They feel like relationships are, um, you know, about both parties being totally, um, you know, just on their own, like two sort of ships passing in the night, like two separate parties that then sometimes overlap to say hello or to sort of connect, but they don't realize the concept of like interdependency and what it really means, which is hey, we both take care of our own feelings, needs, and boundaries, and we both show up to live our own lives. And at the same time, we can look out for each other's feelings. We can take each other's wounds into consideration. You know, if I know that somebody has a wound around, um, you know, criticism, then I can be more gentle when I have feedback for somebody and I can validate the things I do appreciate about the person. And I'm not managing their feelings. I'm being considerate about things that they communicated with me. It's not my job to be perfect at it. Obviously the person can work on their fear of criticism as well, but interdependency means it's like both of us looking out for each other and having each other's back in that way and being able to contribute and share with one another what those sensitivities are, what our fears are, what our needs are from each other. And if we can do that in a balanced way, um, where we still maintain that relationship to ourselves and our own needs too, that's healthy interdependency. And so DAs, because they, they struggle with understanding that, because of course it's, it's not their fault, that's what's modeled to them. But because they struggle to understand that, they often feel like, oh my gosh, relationships are just going to suck me into this like codependent dynamic where right? people are just trying to make me responsible for their feelings and people are just making responsible to meet their needs all the time. And it can make them feel very trapped. Hence the avoidance strategies to sort of keep um, space and to not have to fall into that dynamic without realizing that, hey, there's actually like a middle ground for a lot of those different things. So anyways, these are six major reasons DAs stay in situationships or end up in these sort of cycles of situationships. Um, let me know what questions you have down below, what your status is in a relationship right now, um, what sort of situationship dynamics you might fall into in your attachment cell. I'm super curious to hear what, what's gone on for you. And um, let me know any other questions you have or comments. And if you're enjoying this content, please subscribe. And thank you so much for watching.